What's going on gamers? Wanted to make a video on how to return to the game. A lot of people always ask me like, Clyde, I'm coming back to the game. Where do I start? What do I do? And the game really doesn't tell you what to do. All right, booster, fragments, dungeon. Yes, sir! You just spend money and we want you to buy Lightfall. Just swipe your fucking card. Buy more. Don't forget Raid Shadow Legends. Anything else? That was a lot of sh And, you know, you want to get ready for end game activities or doing what everyone else is doing in the game so you don't feel far behind. So I created Larry the Carry account back in Forsaken and I hopped on this account for Witch Queen and wanted to do a tutorial on how to return to the game. Now my account was 1350 when I signed on. I did have some stuff that I required from Forsaken and other times that I played on it. Oh, I kind of got some juice. This is in my vault. This is in my vault. Right, so this is kind of what I'm working with. Dude, look at the juice that I got though. So I got the Fate Bringer. I got the Night Watch. I got a nice Cartesian. I have a nice Eternal Blazon. But here's the thing, like, do I get rid of them? I want to make this like, the new player experience do i delete this shit or just put them in my vault and don't use them because like people don't people don't use this shit right like people don't have this so i think i put it in the vault so i do have exotics and weapons that i've had on my account for a while but the first thing i did was i went to the gift of the thunder gods and i grabbed a full armor set a primary an energy and a heavy the reason why I stopped here at Gift of the Thunder Gods and picked this armor set up is because I was at 1350. I was at 1350. All my armor was 1350. The reason why I picked this up right away is because if you're going to do the Witch Queen campaign, which I think you should, it's one of the best content out there. Yes, it will bring you up to 1520 from 1350, but all the materials that you get from beating Witch Queen campaign on legendary mode is upgrade modules. You're going to get a whole bunch of upgrade modules. Okay, and I'm gonna stack those up. So pretty much I grab the set early. So any materials that I get throughout the Witch Queen campaign, I stack them and I don't have to use them. Being back on an account that you're returning from that you previously played on or a new light, you don't have those materials. So the game gives you upgrade modules. So you use them to upgrade your current gear so you can play the next mission, so on and so forth. But I don't wanna do that. I will be getting new weapons. Now these weapons I got from Doing the new light, this night watch can drop with this roll or a random roll. I got lucky because I've played on this account before and I have Arbalist and Wither Horde. Obviously, you see no catalyst. Uh Risk Runner got that from New Light. Trinity Ghoul, I got this to drop. And Tractor and Xenophage because I did the quests. And Tractor I actually got from Xur. Now, exotics wise, I don't have really nothing that I don't need. I mean, I have every single exotic from my Titan that I would use on my main account but you would have to grind lost sectors for those or just play the game. Now, the reason why this gift of the Thunder Gods is so good is because it gives you the Thundercrash chest piece and Thunderlord. And if you're on a Warlock, it gives you the Getaway Artist Gauntlets and Thunderlord or the Hunter with Liar's Handshake and Thunderlord. So the reason why I wanted to juice to 1540 right away is because I knew that I was gonna have to do the Witch Queen campaign. Now, you don't have to do this on the Legendary. I did just so I can have the experience. But if you wanna just solo and burn through the Witch Queen campaign, you can. The reason why it's so important to pretty much do that step is you probably just bought Witch Queen Digital Deluxe Edition. Hopefully you got the 30th anniversary included in yours because I didn't. I would definitely recommend doing that because Galahorn is pay to win. But when you complete the Witch Queen campaign, it unlocks certain powerfuls and pinnacles like preservation you get the quest for the vow mission you get the weekly story campaign mission unlocked and like altar of reflection and so on and so forth you kind of get what i'm saying here also you get the quest to get the parasite so the reason why i did legendary campaign is because it gave me a lot of upgrade modules and as i was beating those missions i was getting blues that were dropping higher than 1540. so not only was i earning minimal power levels going through the campaign but i was also getting materials upgrade modules so on and so forth that you pretty much need to upgrade your gear so perfect example right here 
this is the first mission on legendary campaign and once you beat like checkpoints of the mission you get a box well on master difficulty uh, or the legendary difficulty of the campaign you get more so you get the juice right here so those upgrade modules they give you those but they want you to use them the reason why i picked up the armors so i don't have to use those so everything i get i'm deleting so yeah so the reason why you don't need to pick up this armor but the reason why i did is because you're already in the game and you're stacking all the materials that you're getting i think it's worth it now you do have to complete the full witch queen campaign to unlock some powerfuls and pinnacles but i don't think you should take this approach for this at all i think you should do these missions as you can to get them done and you could focus on other stuff you know there's other stuff you can do for powerfuls and pinnacles if you want to start leveling up obviously to unlock the other stuff with the throne world you're going to need to progress through the witch queen campaign so back to all the stuff that i just got i'm just deleting because i'm stacking materials right now that's all i'm doing i'm literally just stacking materials i'm stacking legendary shards anything i get any weapon i get as you see i do have some weapons that are behind so i could infuse it which i'm going to because there might be some weapons that you used to use in the game that uh currently don't use anymore or you want to use and you need to upgrade some stuff so for the sake of this i'll just upgrade some stuff because that's the problem if you don't grab the thunder of the old gods you need to keep upgrading your gear for each mission or throw on stuff you don't want to and some of those pieces from get the thunder gods actually gave me a lot of good uh, armor pieces too like some mods that i didn't have so when you are going through your campaign if you wanted to do normal or legendary it's kind of up to you but you do want to get through it as fast as you can after you've completed the campaign and picked up multiple quests where you're pretty much overflowing with everything gamers i know when you return to the game or you miss a season and you come back and there's like quests all over the place and you don't know what to do that's okay i'm gonna break them down and show you what i did how i unlock seasonal content and how i unlock crafting and taipan and all those good juicy weapons and how to get the callus mini tool and all those other stuff sit tight in your quest tab you don't know what to do i would head to the helm because you want to unlock some of the stuff that's in the helm and maybe get guns from previous seasons i headed to the war table got some seasonal quests unlock also found out that i could decode some umbrals here you know decoding this umbral of the, the arsenal of the dreaming city is really good to get yourself a good scout rifle and also see the previews of the previous weapons from that season so you got the war table you have the newest star chart from this season and you also have the crown of sorrow helmet down here that we like to say for the moon weapons that everybody wants a lot of people do be chasing the callus mini tool so when you're going through the story you're going to be getting quests and unlocking stuff you will be getting a helm quest you're going to want to complete that and then it's going to give you something like this operation elbrus so when you complete Operation Albrus, you'll be able to unlock the seasonal content. You'll have PSYOPs and all that other stuff unlocked, just like the Bound and Sorrow quest that I have right here in my inventory. So these are the two from the previous seasons, and then Sales of the Ship Stealer is this season. So once you head to the helm, kind of interact with stuff, and then go into your Destinations tab, kind of see that, oh, there's something on the moon. It's telling me that I should go do it. Yeah, that's your introduction to that seasonal content. Is this something you should worry about? Not really. So on my account, I went straight for Taipan. And to get Taipan quests, you have to do the Witch Queen campaign. And once you unlock the glaive, it will give you a quest introduction to weapon crafting and so on and so forth. You literally just follow the steps and you will see what it will tell you to do and once you complete one quest you're probably going to have to complete another and so on and so forth and you want to keep doing those quests until you unlock a certain auto rifle and it's called the amit ar2 you actually get two of these to start the quest they are red borders when you complete them you can craft it it's not a bad energy weapon to craft you can put incandescent on it and just roll then once you finish the auto rifle it will give you the linear fusion rifle the type him as soon as i crafted this i put this on and i did all my story missions with it why because as i was doing the story it was leveling the weapon up now i didn't want to put enhanced perks on it because i wanted to just put triple tap firing line on it because that's what i use on my main one anyways you could just roll through the campaign with type in the amet auto rifle and then a good kinetic i was rolling with a shotgun 
with auto loading and frenzy you you know you can head over to the tower and pick up your forsaken exotics out of the kiosk and roll with wither horde if you want i got lucky with arbalist again you're just trying to unlock all the content that you possibly can and you're probably seeing all these quest tabs and you're like what do i do like it's telling me so much to do well i just want to go through this real quick and kind of explain everything that i have in my inventory and you can even google these quests on how to get them so we have of queens and worms this is for parasite you get this in the enclave once you beat the campaign spirit of power this is your introduction to wellspring obviously it just says complete a wellspring you get it from finch like i said bound in sorrow is for the old seasonal challenges to unlock the crown of sorrow weapons operation albris is for you to unlock the war table stuff from another previous season that was in psyops and sales of the ship stealer this is for this seasonal content that we're currently doing now captain's atlas this is your map fragments and your treasure coordinates for the current season right now trust goes both ways this is for likely suspect it is a fusion rifle it is a quest you don't need to do but it's easy to do if you want to do it easy forerunner don't need to do forerunner and i got this from playing the game and doing some dares of eternity again if you want stuff from dares if you want a sword that you can fly across the map with a eager edge you're gonna have to do dares this quest is literally an introduction to gambit but as you see when you're playing it you do get xp plus plus from it so it could bring you up in the game and give you xp divine fragmentation is something i did in my previous playthrough that is for my divinity it's ready to go this memory of the veils this is all stuff from shadow keep you don't have to worry about it this is my wither horde catalyst again pain in the ass but it's good to have the start getting going ruthless slumber quest this is just an introduction to the game sympathy of death is for the uh death bringer from the moon wish ender it's for wish ender obviously you have to present it to talisman in the shattered throne light reforge is introducing the crucible introduction to the transmog and then beyond light which i don't have in this account so i'm gonna go through and i'm just gonna delete stuff what i don't think is important there's a few that i really don't care about so i'm not gonna get likely suspect again i just want to break this down to you on why i'm doing this because it's important uh right here i'm gonna keep this gambit one just because it's almost done and you know what i'm gonna get rid of it. i'm just gonna get rid of it we don't need to pay attention to that stuff right now the reason why i want to show you to delete quests because you can actually pick these all back up so i wanted to do this as a demonstration maybe you're just overrun with quests right now and you really don't know where to start and maybe you're like me and you like to get stuff out of your inventory so that you can just knock stuff out and pick it back up that's what i like to do i kind of just delete stuff and then i go all right if i want to do more i'll just go pick them back up all right now that we're all set up we only got 10 quests left so i know exactly what i need to do for each one when you delete quests in the tower or in the helm you can actually revisit those quests there is a quest archive in the helm and in the tower so you can simply come interact with all these and see what you missed and complete them if you really want to some of these quests like the intro to the game aren't really important but the exotic legacy ones some people care about so again just wanted to go over this i'm all set up i know exactly what i have to do i have the current season unlocked because i did i started doing the current season quest stuff i came to the helm i interacted with it i unlocked my type in i completed the story on legendary again you can beat it on normal and there's still stuff i'm missing if you look at my savathun throne world i don't have vox unlocked well i have to do operation albris to unlock vox vox is a mission where it can unlock pinnacle and also give you the dead messenger weapon dead messenger weapon is nice because you can switch the affinity on it and go from arc solar to void i don't have it unlocked yet but it's something you should do i also don't have the story missions unlocked because i didn't level finch up me personally i don't think that's important right now most of the stuff that i'm telling you you're not going to do all at once you're probably going to grab your 1540 gear you're going to do one or two story missions and you're gonna be like i'm bored you can do that just bounce around i didn't want to level up finch i don't care about that stuff right now i wanted to head to king's fall why because everybody's doing king's fall i can do 100k nightfalls at 1570. i want to be able to do stuff with everyone else in the community what they're doing and i want my power level to be there too everything i did on this account was solo leveling except i did do a duality dungeon everything else the leveling on this account to 1565 i did on my own again 
just leveling, picking up stuff, doing powerfuls and pinnacles, doing stuff that's matchmaking. I'm going to head into King's Fall. I'm going to do a King's Fall undercover LFG, and you guys are going to love that. That video will be dropping very soon. But I just wanted to demonstrate on main stuff you can focus on. You know, what's the easy stuff? Well, I mean, dares, you got a powerful here. You can just do powerfuls. Remember, you don't need to do pinnacles right now if you can, because I'm not at the point where pinnacles you know are going to help me out you need to get the 1570 to even start getting like the plus two pinnacles to get you there so anything you do right now is up to you if i want to do a pinnacle sure i'm 1559 base if i do a pinnacle it's probably gonna be 1564 you know but again some people just might not be able to have time or they find people to run with so just playing the game is going to level up you do three dares also you're trying to unlock red weapons you come over here you do your altar reflection you get you get your powerful there you do your altar reflection here you do your preservation that's a pinnacle you do your vow maybe you want to start doing vow you can 1520 is the recommended power you're already in the game so just picking up that one set of armor you're already included in the game and you don't have to worry about this stuff that's why i wanted to make this video you don't have to worry about all this other side stuff you can easily play the game. You just have to tell people, hey, I returned to the game. I don't have a lot of weapons, but I'm at the level. You can go do these old raids. So you can bounce in, go do three strikes, go do a nightfall, go do some gambit, go do some crucible, you know, maybe do some legacy raids. A powerful here, a powerful there, but like mainly focus on doing what you need and maybe listen to people what they say. Oh, how'd you get type pen? I need that one. Oh, well. Here's what you do when you're doing the Witch Queen campaign and you unlock the Enclave, go interact with it and pick up the introduction to quest. You're going to pick up a quest that's introduction to forging weapons. I can tell you right now with type in a good energy weapon such as Vowed Safe, Funnel Web, Callus Mini Tool and an Arbalist with three weapons, you can beat any raid. You, you literally a normal mode. Don't even worry about masters because you just return the raid with those three weapons. You can beat the game. You don't need to switch it up at all now obviously if you have a good rocket launcher or you have galley you could put it on but i'm just telling you don't freak out linears are just so good right now arbalist is going to break your shields your energy weapons is going to help you kill stuff and type in is going to give you the good dps on every boss without optimizing now if you want to go to the next level if you want to start paying attention to the game and doing more stuff you can come here and interact with this you can actually pick up tokens here that gives you three free exotics for forsaken i picked up lemonark i picked up izanagi i didn't pick up a third i just picked up those two but i also had uh you know stuff available here that i can get with um oils of conquest or whatever but again we don't have a lot of materials so but i just wanted to let you know you can always come here and use your materials one thing you do need to pay attention to when you're returning the game is mods. Yes, this is the most annoyingest thing ever. Some of these mods you might not have at Banshee. Also, Banshee's weapons. Sometimes Banshee rolls some decent weapons, and you can always check these out just to be like, hey, you know, this gun might be cool. I want to try it out. What sucks about a returning player is you don't have mods, and I can even show you this right now. I only have a minor resilience mod. I don't even have the actual resilience mod that gives you plus 10 resilience. I don't have reserves. I don't have scavengers. I don't have all the basic mods of the game. It's very annoying. If you want to unlock some of those mods, you pretty much just need to grind powerful playlists or grind any playlist they drop at the end. Pretty much the mods can drop at the end of any activity or when you get a powerful or when you complete something. So you'll get them over time, but it's very annoying. And this is going to be your best friend for every day when you return to the game as well. 801. Her mods switch every day at 1 p.m. East Coast. Pretty much daily reset. Melee Kickstart and Heavy Handed are two very good mods. I already have them. But you're going to be wanting to pay attention to this every single day. Also, as you're playing the game, you should always grab upgrade modules from her if you can, if you have the materials to spare. Remember, you get those materials from your season pass and other activities, so pay attention to stuff like that. So once you're checking your mods and once you're checking what mods you need and once you're checking 801, that's kind of taking it to the next step. So I just wanted to throw together something and show you that it's really easy to return to the game. I actually played this on stream, two days of full gameplay, seven hours each day, so about 14 hours. But you gotta remember, I stopped a lot. I told chat a lot of things that I was doing and why and what. 
again within a week or two of you returning to the game i feel like you can be up to level to do all the raids such as king's fall vow and some of the older raids in the game if you have those dlcs also some of the seasonal content unlocked and if you go for that taipan right away as you're playing and you'll be leveling it up it'll be easy because every time you complete an activity it'll level up for you and you'll be able to craft and have the materials to craft it to a triple tap firing line or whatever role you prefer some people might throw a different perk on there because they might not want triple tap firing line but you can do whatever you want but other than that i mean it's, it's pretty much basic i i think that most of the stuff that you would accomplish by learning from this video is pretty basic and by the time you play for so many hours you're going to learn how to do anything future stuff anyway like how to how to unlock more seasonal content also i wanted to show you that in the seasonal challenges if you're trying to unlock pre previous seasonal challenges if you wanted to unlock stuff in the crown of sorrow to unlock some stuff for mini tools those challenges or are in the season of the ribs and, and season of the haunted so you can see what to do and complete all them is it easy to do no does it take a lot of time yeah but we had to do it too so but again your main focus is to have a good linear your main focus is to have a decent energy weapon and a good primary maybe you get lucky from Zer every week and unlock arbalist like i did but it's not that hard don't freak yourself out i know it's a chore but getting that 1540 armor is very important right off the bat and then just playing the game as you wish now again like i said the only thing you really have to do is progress the stuff in witch queen so you can unlock more powerfuls and unlock more quests and guns and stuff like that for your play but other than that just play as you wish hopefully this video has helped you kind of understand what the do's and don'ts are and kind of skip all the bullshit get straight to the game because you know me i go straight to the point i don't sugarcoat anything so it's easy to do i know you might not understand some of the stuff or be like hey what did he do here what did he do there come hang out and chat come ask me be like hey clyde watch the video wanted to make a new character also it's very easy to make a new character i wanted to point this out too i'm glad i didn't forget so what i did was is i created a warlock and as you see i picked up that armor on the warlock i picked up the 1540 gear on the warlock so it's really easy to make multiple characters i'm just letting you know really easy other than that coming out and chat ask me questions but i hope this video helped you guys understand on how easy it is to return to the game or what to do and how to catch up with all the players that play every day don't forget to sub and i'll see you guys next time peace